A contempt hearing was held earlier this morning in the criminal trial against Donald Trump for his various violations of the gag order in place, his threats and intimidation directed at witnesses and jurors. This hearing in the Manhattan courthouse uh, in the criminal trial relating to Donald Trump's falsification of business records to interfere with the 2016 election it was an explosive hearing. Uh, throughout the arguments, one of the things that Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, tried to claim was that, look, Donald Trump's just reposting other people's articles. He's not saying it himself, to which Justice Mershon said, do you have any case law to suggest that posting other people's articles would still not be a violation? And Justice Mershon very astutely pointed out, and you realize that Donald Trump is also manipulating these articles? The quotes that Donald Trump is attributing to certain people are actually quotes that Donald Trump himself is manipulating and changing the language in the quotes. By the way, that's something that our editorial team at MidasTouch.com has been consistently pointing out, so it's good to see that that is reaching a wider audience right now that Donald Trump is doing that, to which uh, Todd Blanche had to say, Judge, look, Donald Trump is doing his best to comply, I hear you, but he's really trying so hard to comply with the gag order each and every day, and he just doesn't know what he's supposed to do and what he can't do, to which Justice Mershon responded to Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, Mr. Blanche, listen to me very carefully. You are losing all credibility in this courtroom. Do you understand me that you are losing all credibility here? It's a powerful line from Justice uh, Mershon. Let me just take you through what went down at this contempt hearing uh, earlier in the day. Now, the court is reserving its ruling on whether or not Trump will be held in contempt, whether it will be financial penalties, financial penalties, plus something even more. As the district attorney pointed out, for this specific group of violations, they were not seeking incarceration yet. And they emphasized the word yet. But they also pointed out earlier this morning that they were filing another application for an order to show cause to hold Donald Trump in contempt for additional violations that Donald Trump has made recently. And I believe that's referring to the story that we exclusively broke at the Midas Touch Network, where Donald Trump uh, intimidated and harassed the jury last night, where he said the jury's being very unfair to him. He said the jury's made up of 95% Democrats, which I don't even think is true. So I think we're gonna be seeing another application in addition to the one that, was, uh, that underwent this hearing earlier this morning, that I think there will be another hearing that will be taking place to hold Donald Trump in contempt again. And I think that hearing will have more serious uh, implications. As Donald Trump was described in the courtroom by various reporters, Hugo Lowell described him as looking fatigued and with his eyes closed. Adam Klasfeld talked about how Donald Trump was flinching the moment photojournalist pool set up in front of him. Um, here's how it started. Klasfeld does some great reporting. Let's just go through. He's in the courtroom. Let's just go through some of the things that he discussed. Justice Mershon took the bench and said, look, there are two matters that have been called into the record. On April 15th, the prosecutors asked this court to sign an order to show cause and allegations that Donald Trump violated the gag order on three occasions. And then on April 18th, they did so again on seven more alleged violations. So a total right there of uh, 10 separate violations. Um, the uh, district attorney, Christopher Conroy, um, explained how, look, the court has already found that the types of extrajudicial statements that Donald Trump has made and is making pose a very real threat to the integrity of these proceedings. That's what the prosecutors say. Yesterday, here in this building, Donald Trump violated the gag order once again on camera. 
Let me be clear, Your Honor, the prosecution will be filing yet another application for an order to show cause on Trump's additional violations later today. We will be filing another application to hold Donald Trump contempt in a separate hearing. The prosecutor then says that Donald Trump seems to think that no one is off limits to him and he thinks that he can attack and intimidate anybody that he wants. The prosecution then went through each of the uh, contempt, each of the gag order violations for which they want Donald Trump to be held in criminal contempt. For example, they showed this message that Donald Trump posted. Um, Thank you, Michael Avenatti, for revealing the truth about two sleazebags who have, with their lies and misrepresentations, cost our country dearly. There, Donald Trump was attacking Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels, two witnesses in the case. That would be a violation of the gag order's restrictions on threatening or intimidating witnesses. The prosecution went over the next gag order violation, which was posted five days before jury selection. And this was uh, a Donald Trump posting a letter from Stormy Daniels that he paid her hush money to write this letter. And Trump goes, look what was just found. Will the fake news report it? The prosecution went on to show other violations by Donald Trump of the gag order. Here again, your honor, Michael Cohen is a reasonably foreseeable witness. This is again Donald Trump going after Michael Cohen's credibility, which is a recurring theme in these posts. This was two days before jury selection, where Donald Trump said, Has Mark Pomerantz been prosecuted for his terrible acts out of the DA's office? Has disgraced attorney and felon Michael Cohen been prosecuted for lying? Only Trump people get prosecuted by this judge and these things. A dark day for our country. MAGA 2024. One of the things that Todd Blanche tried to argue, Trump's lawyers tried to argue, is when Donald Trump says MAGA at the end, I kid you not, this is the argument. When Trump says MAGA at the end of the post, that makes it a political statement. And therefore, Donald Trump's just trying to utilize this to campaign because he's saying MAGA, which is one of his campaign slogans. And the prosecution says, if anything, that makes it more threatening and ominous to say MAGA. It's like a rallying call to Trump's base to try to go after the witnesses. And that strains all credibility to say that that makes this political in nature. You are attacking the witnesses. And Justice Mershon agreed. And Justice Mershon looked right at Todd Blanche and said, look, this is a contempt hearing. If you're basically saying that using one word, whether it's that Trump used the word pardon or used the word MAGA, that that now makes Donald Trump being allowed to violate the gag order, you have serious issues, Mr. Blanche, regarding your credibility and how you're acting and behaving in this courtroom. The prosecution went on uh, to talk about all these other times Donald Trump threatened and intimidated witnesses. But one of the things, too, that the prosecution said is particularly disturbing is when Donald Trump is posting about the jury. And they talked about how last Wednesday, um, uh, right, jury selection was taking place. Donald Trump posted on his social media, quote, they are catching undercover liberal activists lying to the judge in order to get on the Trump jury. And Donald Trump attributes that quote to Jesse Waters. And the prosecution says, even if that was what Jesse Waters says, that would be a violation. But that's actually not what Jesse Waters even said. Um, Trump actually manipulated the sentence and added language uh, to the sentence as well and changed what Jesse Waters had actually said, and then a juror left because of that. A juror felt that they were felt threatened and intimidated, and juror number two um, said that they can no longer be fair and impartial as a direct result of uh, Donald Trump's threats and intimidation. Um, and the prosecution said, "Look, this is this should be very clear. These are very clear violations." Um, T- Donald Trump's lawyer Todd Blanche said. Look, 
Donald Trump is facing a barrage of attacks from all corners. Michael Cohen's going after him. Stormy Daniels is going after him. And so Trump has to respond to what they're saying. So Justice Mershon said, hey, you know, can you give me an example of where you think that's the case? And then Todd Bland said, well, here's an example where Michael Cohen was referring to Donald Trump as an orange menace. And then the judge said, can you show me the post? And so what it was, was Donald Trump first attacked Michael Cohen and then Cohen then responded. And the judge said, in any event, Michael Cohen's not on trial. Stormy Daniels is not on trial. They're not the criminal defendants in this case. Your client, Donald Trump, is the criminal defendant in this case. And that's what I'm concerned about. He needs to follow the gag order. He needs to comply with the gag order. And then they went on to what I said earlier, how Todd Bland said, uh, to uh, Justice Mershon, Trump's really trying to comply, and the judge is like, look, you're losing all credibility here. Justice Mershon said, I'm going to reserve my ruling, and I will be ruling soon. There has not been a ruling yet. But then as soon as there was a break before David Pecker, the first witness, went back and took the stand, Donald Trump attacked Justice Mershon in all caps and said, highly conflicted, to put it mildly, Judge Juan Mershon has taken away my constitutional right to free speech. Everybody is allowed to talk and lie about me, but I am not allowed to defend myself. This is a kangaroo court and the judge should recuse himself. So after that whole hearing that I talked about, there was a 10 minute break and Donald Trump used that break to post in all caps an attack against the judge and a false attack against the judge. Trump simply restricted from threatening and harassing witnesses in the case, threatening and harassing and talking about the jurors in the case, talking about family members of the district attorney or the, or, or, uh, the judge. I mean, that's basic for all people who are in the criminal justice system that you, uh, that you can't do that. So that was the update uh, from today. And then Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, entered the courtroom and as Adam Klasfeld described it, Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, looked even more miserable than Trump. Like, I mean, as Trump continues to attack the judge, as the judge is now saying, you've lost all credibility, Mr. Blanche, in this courtroom, you've got Todd Blanche being described by reporters as looking absolutely miserable. And that's everything Donald Trump touches. And you'll recall Trump's prior lawyer in this case, Joe Takapina, quit, and for good reason. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. We'll keep you posted as soon as we get the ruling. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks for watching.